Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this problem, we're going to find the arc length uh, given these parametric equations uh, over the interval 0 to 2 pi solution. So the formula for the arc length, which we can call S uh, from A to B, uh, give it, uh, when it, whenever it's parametrized by parametric equations, the formula is given by x prime of t quantity squared plus y prime of t quantity squared dt. So given parametric equations x and y, uh, the arc length from A to B, so the length of the arc uh, of the graph given by the parametric equations is given by this formula. So in this problem we just have to take the derivatives and plug everything in. Our a is 0 and our b is 2 pi. So for all the derivatives we're going to use the product rule. So the way I do the product rule is as follows. So given f times g, I think of f as the first and g as the second. So I think of it as the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So here x prime, it's going to be the derivative of e to the negative t. Well, the derivative of e to the negative t is just e to the negative t times the derivative of the inside, right, chain rule. And the derivative of negative t is negative 1. So that's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first, so e to the negative t, and then times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. Yikes, and we're going to have to square this. So this is equal to, uh, I'm going to rewrite this as follows. Maybe we can pull out um, a negative e to the negative t, right? We do have to square it at some point. So negative e to the negative t. This will be cosine t plus sine t. That might make squaring it a little bit easier when we get to the pro when we actually plug it in. Y prime, same thing, derivative of the first. The derivative of e to the negative t is e to the negative t times the derivative of the inside. So again, negative 1, and then times the second. So sine t plus the first piece, so e to the negative t times the derivative of sine, which is just cosine t. In this case, um, I'll just pull out, uh, no, I'll pull out a negative again. So I'll pull out a negative e to the negative t. Why not? To be consistent. And that'll be sine t. And then when we pull out the negative from this piece, there's a plus. So it'll be minus cosine t. All right, so now the messy part. Um, we're going to take these and plug them in to s. So uh, it's going to be from 0 to 2 pi. And then I'll hold off on writing the square root. So we're going to square this. Okay. Now when you square this, right, when, when, you, when you square this whole piece, what happens is um, you, just, you can square each individual piece. You can square the e, and you can square this piece. Um, I'll, I'll just square the whole thing for now, just to not skip a step. So it's negative e to the negative t, and then cosine t plus sine t. And we're squaring this whole thing. Oh, why not? Let's just square each piece. <laughs> and then plus, right, plus. Now we're squaring this thing. Right, that's your y prime. So it'll be squaring the e, and then squaring the second piece, sine t minus cosine t. And this whole thing here is squared. And then we have a giant square root, right? I wanted to hold off on writing the square root so I wouldn't feel restricted by what I was writing. And then dt, yikes. All right, now we just have to integrate this bad boy. Let's do it. So s is equal to the definite integral from 0 to 2 pi. Um, when you square this, the negative is going to go away. Let me do it over here. If you square this, the negative goes away, and you end up multiplying the 2 by the negative t. So you just get e to the negative 2t. Right, And then when you take the square root of that, it cancels the 2. Another way to think about it is when you square this, you can think of it like this. It's negative 1 times e to the negative t squared. So it's negative 1 squared e to the negative t squared. That's 1 times e to the negative t squared. And when you take the square root, it kills, it gets rid of the 2. Right, It gets rid of the 2. So we're just left with e to the negative t outside the square root, right? Because the square root will get rid of this 2, right? It will eliminate the 2. Then we're left with all of this stuff here. Let's multiply this out. So multiplying this out, it's going to be, it's all in the square root. So you square the first one, so you get cosine squared. Then you multiply these and you double them, right? So it would be plus 2 cosine t sine t. 
then you square the last one, so sine squared. That's one of the formulas from, from math, right? If you have a plus b squared, you square the first one, you multiply the a and the b and you double them, and then you square the last one. And then plus, plus, same thing here, right? We're just going to square these. So it'll be sine squared, so you square the first one. Then you multiply the other two and double them, so minus 2 sine t cosine t. And then you square the last one, so plus cosine squared t. Wow, and then we have dt. So this is equal to the definite integral from 0 to 2 pi. I think I picked a messy problem, e to the negative 2. Let's see what's going on here. So cosine squared plus sine squared, that's going to be 1. Oh, these cancel. That's really good. And then cosine squared, sine squared plus cosine squared, that's going to be 1. So we get 1 plus 1, so we get the square root of 2. How nice. Now we just have to integrate this. When you integrate e to a number, like if you have like e to the 2x dx, um, you just divide by the 2, right? It's e to the 2x over 2 plus c. So you just divide by the number. So here we just divide by the negative 1. So we're going to get negative, dividing by negative 1 is just going to give us a negative square root 2, e to the negative t, and then we're going from 0 to 2 pi. So this is equal to negative root 2. So again, when you integrate e to the negative t, you just, you just divide by negative 1. I just put the negative on the outside. When you get here, you plug in the 2 pi first, and I'm going to leave the square root on the outside. So it'll be e to the negative 2 pi minus and then e to the 0, right? So this is going to be negative root 2 e to the negative 2 pi minus 1. And that is the arc length. That should be the final answer. That's it. I hope this video uh, made sense.